All right. So um, thanks to the uh, organizers for, for letting me uh, talk uh, in this uh, great uh, uh, meeting. And I'm really, really glad to, to talk a bit about my work in Abinit, of what I've been doing. Uh, just to step back a bit, um, my work is focused on the ground state calculation uh, and uh, in the framework of uh, non-conserving soda potential. So everything that we are going to see uh, is done within the framework of uh, non-conserving soda potentials. So what is the problem that we're trying to tackle is that, um, well, in low dimensional systems, uh, when we try to do uh, calculations with periodic boundary conditions, we have these unwanted interactions uh, due to the long, long range um, uh, character of the Coulomb potential. So what we are trying to, what we people normally do, we're trying to avoid or to reduce the effect of this interaction is to increase the vacuum size. The advantage is that you can use the DFT code as it is, but the great advantage in this kind of approach is that it becomes computationally uh, costly very fast, especially in the plane wave uh, framework. So there is a there is a solution to this problem. Actually, we can translate the Coulomb potential, uh, and you know benefit of the advantage of needing less vacuum and uh, with a small cost of uh, of needed implementation in order to treat this this problem. So where it all started actually is uh, that um, all these formulas have appeared as a solution to the GW. Uh, treatment of the Coulomb singularity, which uh, many of them are already implemented in Abinit. Uh, most of them are not necessary for our ground state part, as they deal specifically with the uh, with the uh, with the uh, singularity point, and some of them are only focused on on exchange on uh, hybrid exchange uh, correlation functions. So what we'll focus on are only uh, the methods that are dealing with a spherical, cylindrical, or surface cutoff, so uh, specific to 0D, 1D, or 2D systems. Just to outline a bit my talk, um, I'm going to show a bit what, what the Coulomb kernel truncation might consist of and what changes have we done in Abinit and show uh, how far we have progressed. Uh, this is still an ongoing work, so, uh, and, but we, we, we still can check uh, the nature of our calculation and the nature of our implementation. Um, so what is actually uh, the, the truncation about is that is this simple transformation of the, of the Coulomb kernel that is present throughout the, the, the density functional theory formalism into attaching basically a function as a cutoff function that is different depending on the... Uh, oh. Okay, that is uh, different the, depending on the station that are in. If you are treating uh, zero dimensional materials, uh, you have a simple uh, formula for this with a specific uh, mentioning that you have, uh, as indicated in the space uh, in the paper by Spencer and Lavi, um, a correct cutoff ra radius uh, in order to treat this uh, to treat the, the Coulomb kernel. Um, as well for the, the for the one D and two D cases, there are, there, there are methods proposed by by Rossi or Beiges, uh, with a specific mention that in the Rossi's case, in the one one dimensional um, uh, truncation, so the truncation for the one dimensional system, you have basically a cylindrical uh, cross section which is not necessarily suitable when treating um, rectangular uh, volumes that usually do in DFT calculations. So this is basically slightly off into treating completely correctly the electrostatic of the um, of the physical system that you are that you are trying to study. While for the Beige's case, you need to solve a quadrature. I'm not going to to go into details about the formulas, just showing them. You need to solve basically a quadrature into uh, a rectangular shaped uh, cutoff, which is a very well. Um, Taking into account the correct electrostatic of the of the of the physical picture that you have in there, for all the for all the cases that I'm showing here, we have set up the indicated uh, cutoff radius for for each specific method, with the mention that well we have left the liberty for the user to play around with another variable called uh, earth path to see how this modifies uh, the. The, basically, the Coulomb kernel when you're trying to, to use a different cut of it's it's just to 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 be able to manipulate it, but it's not recommended. For the case of the 2D methods, again, Rossi and Beige have two different uh, have proposed some methods. Here again, with a special mention that 
setting the correct uh, radius cutoff for the ROTIS method, you basically fall in, uh, into the uh, into the method proposed by Beiji in in the correct treatment of the cutoff uh, for the for the two dimensional systems. So where we have where do we have to change the 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 kernel is basically in a couple of parts in the ground state calculation. One is the Hartree potential, uh, one is the another is the ionic potential, and a more complicated part um, is the reciprocal space summation of the of the of the Ewald uh, of the Ewald summation, basically, where you have to introduce this uh, at least at the level of for the 2D metals this uh, almost parasitic uh, cutoff term that uh, slows a bit down the exponential decay uh, present in the bulk summation, in the bulk eval summation. What changed in terms of variables? Well, previously we had the methods that were available at the GW level that are already implemented in Abinit, not by me. Uh, and they're used uh, using the variable by uh, ICAT cool. Now we have changed this situation by uh, maintaining the ICAT cool at the ground state level and renaming and basically creating the, the other two variables at the fork uh, operator level and the GW operator level. I've already added the test to, to, uh, to take into account the behavior of such a, of such a, uh, of an input variable in the, um, in the appinit and it's working uh, correctly so far, uh, at least at the 2D and 0D methods. Um, and inside the code, basically, we have tried to extract from the vCool module that was present at the GW level and try to transform uh, this uh, suitable methods into the ground state part. And finally, uh, we have created this G-term cutoff that is only the array uh, that contains the truncation to the Coulomb kernel uh, that is applied everywhere that's needed at the, at the ground state level. Just to show you that uh, how this works so far, uh, basically, here I have a comparison between Abinit and Quantum Espresso, and we're looking at the uh, truncated and untruncated part, uh, uh, Coulomb kernels uh, in the Hartree and, and Ionic side. Um, I'm just showing here, basically, with a pseudo potential as close as possible to the one used in this published paper here, that we have similar uh, behavior uh, in in, uh, in terms of the of the truncation of the, of the truncated potentials. Here you see that we have the same linear behavior uh, outside the, the zone center and the zone boundary, uh, which is um, which is a good validation for for the behavior of the of the of the implemented method. And when looking at the Konsham potential, again comparing with quantum express calculation, we have the same kind of uh, expected behavior. Here I'm not just using uh, the, the, the same size trick to trick the viewer because you see at the zone boundary you have different uh, values for the heart report uh, for the conscient potential and at the zone center is the same situation but this is due to the fact that um, uh, you use slightly different pseudo potential so the pseudo potential will, will strongly affect the behavior at, in this specific region but what is important is that we have a region for the truncated um, conscient potential that is perfectly zero and we have basically a barrier potential at the zone boundary. Now, just to look at the 1D system, I have considered uh, a sodium chain in this in this situation, and for different, uh, let's say, boxes in uh, size of the box in the in the in plane, we have looked on how the truncation it's affecting the band structure uh, along the along the chain direction, of course, the only periodic direction, uh, and we see that. A good part in here is that uh, Abinit is converging slightly faster compared to the Octopus, where this method was originally implemented. And um, just to show that, well, in the case of Siesta, that is a numerical atomic orbital based code, uh, I have only used the DZP, a simple double zeta with polarization and band structure. That's why we still see some difference uh, difference in this in this case. But there is a good thing that Abinit seems to converge quite fast with respect to the backing size. Uh, as a forecoming work. We still have to. Um, I still have to finish the the Ewald, um, summation implementation for the for the mentioned cases and also the forces and stresses. But for the for the current time, you can still successfully look at the um, at least for the 2D methods on how the band structure is affected using these cutoff methods. And hopefully, uh, by the end of of this work, uh, we will have something done at the DFPT level. Thank you for your attention. 
Thank you, Bogdan. Um, well, there was a, there was a, in the discussion a, a mail from Leila, but I think that she has found the answer just after she has asked the question, if I understand well what she uh, wrote. Uh, she was wondering whether the Martina Tuckerman uh, shem was implemented. And so she understand as I've... Mm. Yes, she had no. the answer. Okay, so what? No. <laughs> okay, well, I have just a small answer, a small question. You, you, you yes. mentioned... Uh, uh, a uh, fork, a special fork uh, cut off somewhere in your. Uh... Yes. Yes. Uh, what do you? Enfin, what is it exactly? As, enfin, is it another cut off that has been uh, implemented uh, for hybrid functionals or not? Yes, I think there is. A, there was already um, a cut off uh, implemented, a spherical cut off uh, implemented at the level of the fork operator before. Uh, there was but, a Spencer uh, Alavi, I think. Yes, yes, Wait. precisely. Uh, but now I have inserted, uh, although I, I didn't advertise this too much, uh, there is another module that is called bare v Coulomb potential, uh, which is basically extracted from the GW part of the code that is applied inside the FOC operator. So basically, I, I, I suppose this would, uh, I, I haven't tested this yet, so that, that's why I didn't advertise it uh, too much. But you basically could use, um, the 2D and 1D cutoffs uh, along with uh, the um, hybrids, I, I, as, as far as, I, uh, as I'm concerned. But this, this needs to be tested. So um, I hope I'm not saying anything st stupid at this point. But now the, there is a, a plugin to a bare Vicolom um, module inside the FOC operator part of the code. Okay. Which is I, it open which I to users? Yes, it's in the, it's in the, it's in the trunk, yes. Okay. 